The main problem is the, uh, the absence of hope that we have individuals that we say we want to reintroduce back into society and we want them to, to be contributors to our communities and to be uh, citizens, but we take that right from them and we put a stigma on them that makes it hard for them to actually function, even harder than before they went to prison. One in nine African American voters is not allowed to vote in Wisconsin compared to one in 50 of all Wisconsin voters. As a result, Wisconsin has one of the highest rates of African-American disenfranchisement in the U.S. I've worked for political campaigns where we've gone to door to door in some neighborhoods in Milwaukee, and at some point it seems like every other black male we walk into can't vote or can't be a part of the campaign because they're still on papers, and it gets really disheartening. And the whole point of voting is to have representation based on what your interests are and if you can have, if less of the people in your population are able to vote, your interests are obviously going to be impacted negatively and especially in the African American community where there has been a history of voter disenfranchisement, this just seems to be a continuation rather than an anomaly to fight crime. The minority community, those that are uh, disproportionately uh, the larger form group of the prison population, these individuals, not only do they come back home, some without the right to vote, but some of them are confused that when that right is even restored or when they can vote, so they avoid it altogether. This leads uh, for a disenfranchisement of our representation. It, it leads to a stigmatizing of families and whatever, and, and people beginning to feel that they're not even a part of the process. And it leads to a further deterioration of our communities. It's, it's been well documented in the case of drug, the so-called drug war and, and the area of drugs, that um, the uh, numbers or percentages of African Americans uh, engaging in drug activity is not necessarily greater than others, but the um, degree to which African Americans are targeted, arrested, and then end up um, in, in this case, um, unable to vote um, is, is greatly disproportionate. These results reflect policy decisions and, and implementation as much as anything else, not necessarily the underlying fact of whether or not a crime is committed. I feel that a person has done their time behind bars and they certainly should have the right to vote when they come out, uh, especially in cases if they're working. I mean, you're paying taxes, you can't even vote. That's, that's a problem. And it's, and it's important that just because they may have made a mistake in their lives does not mean that they still aren't an active participant in the society uh, that they're being reintegrated into. If you can't vote, then you're really not free at all because you don't have a say in the decision, or you don't have a say in the, uh, the choice of the person who's going to represent you, the person, the people who are going to be making the laws that are going to affect your life. You know, it's not fair. It totally goes against the face of what our society is supposed to be about, about our, our faith is supposed to be about second chance. Our society is supposed to be about anyone in America who wants to can achieve, they can come from any lot in life and, and, and be successful. But we put a stigma on these individuals that they drag this animal around with them for life that they can't get rid of because of one mistake. We, as a society, are going to look back on this period, and like I say, it's gonna be equivalent to the Salem witch hunts, to the, the Red Scare in Hollywood, to the, the, the Jim Crow system. It's gonna be comparable to all of that. This country is gonna to have to answer to how we've treated our citizens and our neighbors. I myself have been on probation for six years, and or it will be six years um, this coming August. And so I haven't been able to vote since I was actually 18. I'm 24 now, or but going to be 24. And um, the effect that I know it's had on other people on probation and their civil engagement is huge. The uh, effort to defeat or to overturn felony disenfranchisement um, is a national effort. It's very important and we would encourage others to join this effort and attempt to uh, right this wrong. Restoring the right to vote for people with felony convictions who have already served their sentence is fundamentally about freedom, fairness, and democracy. This is a nonpartisan issue.
If you want to learn more or if you would like to ensure we have fair elections in Wisconsin, contact the ACLU at 414-272-4032 or visit our website, aclu-wi.org. If you've been convicted of a felony but are no longer incarcerated, on probation, parole, or extended supervision, you can vote. This video and the ACLU of Wisconsin Foundation report, Unlock the Vote Wisconsin, are supported by the David Rockefeller Fund. Download the report at aclu-wi.org.